Make it sure, yeah. Go there and you have a nice PDF of it. Uh, apparently there's supposed to be a video there as well, but... Uh, it is on YouTube already? Long ago, all right, okay, so there you go. So, <coughs> why did I change my talk? Well, things change a lot faster than I anticipated. We have more VM that speeded up the development of Rakuto Pro 6. And because it's now a lot faster than Rakuto, what was I thinking? Anyway, uh, it's still getting, still getting a lot faster still. Um, you may have seen uh, Jonathan's talk. Uh, I'll get back to that. A lot of things happened on the way. Um, the Google Summer of Code introduced a jitting for interpreted code in Perl 6. Uh, but it's mostly, at the moment, a framework for future advances still. Uh, but it's already getting some nice performance gains. And the cross-pollination, I think, with Spash was especially nice to see. So not only Spash got better, but the JIT got better and the JIT cost especially bigger, better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and accidentally, more people are now working on this part of Hill 6 than ever before, which is another good thing. Some bad things happened. After having a lot of successful conferences, that's actually, actually for just for uh, Wendy and me, uh, both inside and outside the echo chamber, some old Perl 5 geezers, I can't name them anything else, made themselves heard in a very deconstructive way. Another way, and some good things came out of that because that gave me the information for this talk and the strength for this presentation. Now, before we go on, I'd like to go back to about a year and a half ago when Stephen Little actually presented a talk called Pearl is not that, it is a dead end. This was at the Orlando Pearl Workshop in 2013, January. And I did not completely agree with this talk, but I think the title is almost right, because it's actually Pearl 5 is a dead end. <laughs> but Pearl 5 is still not that. But it is a dead end. If you really want to see that presentation, you can find it here. It's very interesting. Because Pill 5, I mean, how would you feel if you'd like to maintain a 70-year-old pile of very complex C code written by multiple authors which has to maintain bug-for-bug -bug compatibility with any random 25-year-old code base? Oh, and you won't be getting paid much? Oh, I like it. You like it? Well, some people are like that. Like that. Um, I think you can do better, but yeah. In any case, I think the people still working on Pool 5 are actually, they're holding the fort for us. And they're covering our back towards the future, and we should not forget that. One of the slides in, in Stephen's talk was actually this one. I believe we are at the crossroads in one direction. We have Perl 5, that's an irrelevance. The other is PHP, Ruby, Python, whatever. And the third way is Perl 6. Now, I would say, damn it, Stephen, you made the wrong choice there. Because Stephen decided to work on Mo, M-O-E, which is now also a dead project. He had the right answer right there. The third way is Perl 6. This is the right way. Especially now that Recuto Pill 6 has become a viable alternative. It is actually the fittest survivor of the implementation evolution. If you look at the implementation of Pill 6, there have been very many iterations. I think in total you could argue between four and six. And this one is the one that's coming on, on top at the moment. And even Larry who has always been uh, outside of all of the evolution stuff, has now started committing to Pearl 6 for real. And not just the specs. So what are we looking at uh, in Recruiter Pearl 6? Well, we have a lot of performance advances. 
Earlier at this conference, Jonathan gave this talk, and if you haven't seen it, you can actually look at the slides here. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a video of it very soon. Um, I'll get back to that. So, what is the Perl community now about? Well, we actually, I think, we have two parts in the Perl community. Note the absence of a number here. It's the vocal part and the silent part. I would say about the vocal part... <laughs> it's the vocal part. We should not touch them, we should not get involved with them, we should just ignore them, if we can. Thank you, Stephen, for that slide, by the way. Uh, we have the Silent Pool community, and I think that's a group of die-hard developers. This just goes on and on over the years, and it's on their shoulders that we can stand now to actually create a future. And we should all realize that, I think. So, this is inspired by Sir Winston Churchill. We shall fight them. Sorry, we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength on the net. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall never surrender. Even though this island is subjugated and starving, the new world will step forth to rescue and liberation of the old. I think this basically sums up what Pearl 6 is going to be for Pearl 5. And it's going to be looking like this for a bit, I think. Hello, and hence my title, Sea Day is Coming. Oh, in case you didn't notice, this is a bunker with a view on the fleet on D-Day. And of course, the sea is for Christmas. And Camellia, I guess, yeah. So, Pearl 6, yeah, but it's, it's a different language. Well, <laughs> let me... <laughs> it's a different language. Well, most Pearl programmers in the past 10 to 15 years have actually had to learn another language for a living. This is sadly... Sad, but true. But I think Pearl 6 is not that much different from Pearl 5. So if you could learn a language X for a living, you can certainly learn Pearl 6. So this whole different language thing, I think, is not a valid argument. It shouldn't be called Pearl. Well, sorry, too late for that now. Actually, I never bought into this system language argument. Pearl is evolving, and this is it. The new Pearl is Pearl 6. But the community, well, if you're still programming Pearl 5, please feel, feel welcome to try Pearl 6 and find out that it's not really that much different. Just more logical, more powerful, more future-proof. But, but, but the community, well, if you're just bitching about what could have been, how things have, should have been done differently, I would say, stop. Either join us or leave us. In any case, shut up. I'm not doing this particularly for anybody here, but anybody, anybody watching on the stream, it's you. <laughs> I would also argue, stop stealing. Instead of spending time trying to mimic Pearl 6 badly, I might add, think about subroutine signatures. Oh, wow, we have subroutine signatures now in Pearl 5. Yay! It's only like maybe 20% of the functionality, and it doesn't work on methods. <laughs> I think you can be constructive in another way. Spend your unpaid time on Pearl 6. There's only a small list of features that's still needed for 6.0.0. And you can be a part of that. For instance, if you want to pre-compile your code, use Perl 6, because Recruiter Perl 6 allows you to pre-compile your code. Loading pre-compiled code is typically 100 times as fast 
as compiling it on the fly. So think about this. If we have use 5 completely ready, your CGI bin scripts could load faster than it could ever load with Perl 5. Cpanel, anybody out there? Okay. Another glimpse of the future from Jonathan's talk. Here we are 14 times faster than Perl 5. Hey, it's a benchmark. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. I know. But this is a glimpse of the future. Right? So, if you don't have any time to write access, jitting your Perl 6 code will do that for you. So, your curve, carefully written business logic that is suffering from performance issues will automatically, automatically, automatically <laughs> lose those performance issues. And this would go for Perl 5 as well in the future. So, we're getting more and more committers. This was from the Check Perl workshop, where actually somebody was going through all the commits all the time, and so that we have many committers, many active committers there. So, are you too stupid to contribute? Well, if you want to contribute, there's always something you can do. We need more people looking at documentation, we need more people writing tutorials, or just simply try things, and tell us if something's to miss, if there's something's amiss, if there is, of course. As an example, we have an introduction by a newbie. It's called Learn Perl 6 in Y Minutes. No, it's Learn X in Y Minutes. And X is Perl 6 here. The best thing we have to an intro to Perl 6 at the moment, go there and be amazed. So, how can you try Perl 6? As a tester, well, we have to something the equivalent of Perl Brew. It's called Recruiter Brew. Go get it and go work with it. How to try Perl 6 as a contributor? Well, it's slightly more involved, but you have to do a Git clone, etc., etc. And about, depending on your hardware, between three and five minutes later, you have a completely fully operational environment for developing Perl 6 Recudo. If you want to look at examples, there's a Rosetta code side. We have the Perl 6 advent calendar. And we have Jonathan Worthington's presentations with a lot of examples. And he's going to give another talk here this afternoon. And I'm pretty sure you'll be amazed at what he can do with Perl 6. And there's a lot of blogs here. There's a lot of articles here if you're coming from Perl 5. If you want to get into the nitty gritty, you can find it there. So. C day is coming. And I would say Perl 6 is now hiring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm afraid this is it for now. If you have any questions, please shoot them at me. I did not have the time to actually time this presentation, so I guess I'm a little short. You're killing me. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Well. Questions? Uh, on the mic, if you can. Lazy person. As someone who hasn't been involved in Perl 6 a lot and hears all these terms about Rakudo and more and stuff, mm -hmm. are you able to briefly explain the difference between more VM, Rakudo, um, whatever the, the latest Rakudo? Okay. Um, Recruiter Perl 6 is a version of Perl 6 written in NQP and Perl 6. So a large part of Perl 6 is written in Perl 6, which is very nice. Uh, another part of it is written in NQP. NQP stands for not quite Perl 6. It's a subset of Perl 6 uh, and it's written in NQP and C. Now, NQP needs a backend to actually execute. There, we now have actually three backends, or you could actually argue almost three and a half backends, but the half one is not really completely functional yet. Three backends, uh, one is more VM, the second one is the JVM, and the old and truly uh, used one is Parrot. 
The half one is actually JavaScript. Uh, there was a Google Summer of Code project last year. And that stalled after that, but has been picked up now again by the same person, actually. Um, so more VM is the thing that talks to your system. NQP talks to more VM. And Rakudo talks to NQP, basically. This means that you can actually, if you want to get involved, really, and you need a backend for system Y, you want to use LLVM? Maybe you want to write a backend for it. Uh, that will be very involved. <laughs> You're probably more, more useful of helping uh, with more VM. But yeah. So that, those, that's a relation uh, between uh, more VM, uh, NQP, and Rakuto Pro 6. Is that an answer? Yep, thank okay. you. Any other questions? So what is actually needed to uh, define what is necessary to make Perl 6 OO? We need to um, sit together. And uh, I know that there are uh, several um, areas that Larry basically wants to see in 6.0. Basically, all, all the areas of the system that would be very hard to change later. We need to actually do, do before that. An example of that is um, NFG. What is NFG? Well, <clears throat> it's Unicode, Unicode related. And basically, in Unicode, you have a, um, a code point for a character. You can have a code point for an accent. You can have a code point for a character and an accent. Um, sometimes they're separate, sometimes they're together. So for many combinations of characters and accents, Unicode has actually defined a code point. But for many, 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 many more, there is no single code point for that combination of a, a letter and an accent. This has always been a problem with Unicode, and the proposal of Larry is that we're going to implement temporary code points for those cases, so that you can always have um, a, a grapheme, hence the G, for any combination of code points, characters, and accents. That needs to be implemented. This is rather low level. Anybody interested in doing some low level C stuff, please come up and we can talk about getting this done. Um, the other part is actually uh, native arrays support. That is still not completely functional in Recruiter Pro 6. And this is where one of the parts where we can actually expect most of the performance benefits from JIT. And there are some other parts uh, regarding uh, distribution of uh, modules on CPAN that need to be fixed and making sure that we have proper identities for things downloaded. That needs to be done. Basically, that's synopsis 11 and 22 that need to be fixed. And, I, yeah, am I forgetting something, Jonathan? That's about it, I think. No, not a great deal. Not a great deal. Yeah. Sorry, Dave? Oh, wow, a microphone. Yeah, that, that basically matches my, my set of things we really need yeah. to do as well. Um, the, the native stuff is a little bit wider. Um, there's, there's a few other things in that area, but they're, they're all very related. Uh, um, that's, the, the native arrays is something I'm planning to work on sort of yeah. almost next. So, okay. uh, and we'll, we'll see who we suck it into doing NFG. Okay. More questions? Could you elaborate on the synopsis? How many are there and how many uh, do still have to be checked to see what, how much has to be done? There are about um, 25 synopsis out of the top of my head. And many have uh, contained features that uh, are planned, uh, but will not be implemented for Perl 6.0. Uh, one of them is the uh, cat type, which is basically uh, a streaming string. And that will definitely not be implemented for 6.0. This is uh, one of the things in there. Uh, it's one of my personal projects to go through all the specs and make sure 
find out what we have implemented, what we haven't implemented, and put it into a category. Do we need that for 6.0 or not? Thank you, Lichint. <laughs> My second part of the question, how much do you think, uh, percentage-wise, is still needed to make 6-0? Percentage-wise? Yes. 80% <sighs> are ready now yeah. for the other 80%. <laughs> well, be clear, I get, yeah, be clear. Okay, how long is it going to take? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would say between 5 and 10%. Yeah, well, that's why I didn't want to go there, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm a classical maintainer, pretty much the athlon of maintainer. When, I reach, of when, when, when I reach for Windows, I use XP today. Um, You're covering our backs, thank you very much. Precisely, well, glad to serve, I guess. Uh, the question is, um, there is a lot of talk about, you know, Perl 5 existing code interop, and uh, I think there was even a meeting yesterday. And uh, there seems to be a very large like accent made that, ooh, we need to earn access. Without access, half of CPAN is unusable. Uh, DBX class does not have any access parts in its entire tool chain. Moose can be entirely access free and in fact can be built as a we, very... We already have Moose in Perl 6. Exactly, it can be, well, but not the Perl 5 Moose, right? So it can be built as a very thin layer on top mm -hmm. of what Perl 6 provides. The XML bindings are going to be within Perl 6. The DBI will be within Perl 6. Uh, Catalyst is entirely Moose based, it's only access part. So why are we still hearing about this work that has to be done to get you know the interop between data types and access between Perl 5 and Perl 6? Who cares? You, if you ask and, 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 and actually, work on V5 is currently stalled, the V5 being the actual part that interprets pure Perl mm -hmm. 5 code. Uh, we don't have even basic stuff like want array and uh, method dispatch on a variable and stuff like that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the want array question is uh, very special. Um, uh, if you ha had been to uh, Damien's talk at the OSCON, uh, he actually uh, said that he was wrong about actually context, uh, the calls in which con the context in which calls are made, and all the things that uh, are related to want and want array. And he actually completely come back from that and basically came up with uh, a module which is now in CPAN that allows you to basically do a Perl six style. Uh, return of values that give you all the information that you need on them. Um, now, for the, uh, the question about XS, personally, I'm not... Uh, personally, I'm convinced, actually, that uh, Perl 6 will be able to do without Perl 5 XS. Because if you go out there in the world, I think the majority of companies that are using Perl 5 do not have any Perl 5 access code of their own. Um, they use CPAN modules that may use C, uh, access components. That's true. Um, some of them have pure Perl versions. So I would argue at the moment, if you really want to be ready for the future, and you put a, a, a version of a module on CPAN that has an access version, make sure that you have a pure Perl version as well, right? Because then, uh, not, not just for Perl 6, but also for other systems like Windows, uh, installing on Windows without a compiler is a pain if you don't have uh, a pure Perl version. Pure version. Um, now, there has been a project which actually at the YEPC last year was pushed very for, uh, forcibly forward to the uh, person doing the project which was called the Perl 5 interop. And this was basically uh, calling, uh, putting a Perl 5 interpreter inside Perl 6 and be able to call Perl 5 code from there and Perl 6 and vice versa. Um, 
Unfortunately, the person doing this uh, has gone AWOL since February and um, uh, tried to actually get something going for this YAPSI, but failed. And I'm not sure of the reasons. If he, he, he told me that he's not sure if he can do it, not when he can do it. Um, so if somebody wants to go there, Stefan, where are you? Okay, Stefan's not here. Um, if somebody else would want to go ahead with that project, then I would be all in favor of that. But I, in the end, I think, personally, but we don't agree on that completely in the Perl 6 community, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't think we need to, because if there are CPAN modules out there with an excess for, uh, part that many people will need, and I'm talking, for instance, DBI, at one point it will get converted to Perl 6 in one way, shape, or form, and we don't need actually Perl 5 interop to be doing that. Well, that's my view, anyway. Uh, it's there. Hi. Yeah, just thinking about what's needed then for a Perl 6.0 release, there's a synopsis that isn't, hasn't been written, which is the 30 one, which is for a standard library. So I assume when you ship it, you'll need a core or standard library, which probably will be fairly controversial. Typically, Perl, people have tended to rely on external modules uh, via CPAN, whereas something like Python has more of a batteries included Mm -hmm. standard library or core. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yes, actually I do. Um, the, if you look at S22, which is uh, the package format uh, synopsis, uh, I actually described there the, the separation between um, the uh, module uh, repositories, like we have CPAN right now, but uh, you could also consider GitHub to be such a repository, and uh, a recommendation service. Now, CPAN at the moment is both a recommendation service and a repository. But in the S22, which is not implemented, well, uh, I would say implemented for 40% at the moment, um, in, it allows you to actually create your own recommendation service, which is basically the module list that we now know on CPAN for Perl 5 modules. Right. And so, you can create your own distributions that way, or your own CPANs, or whatever you, you would call that. And I think uh, at one point, some groups in the community will start this and say, okay, this is our set of modules that you can get. And the other will say, okay, this is our set of modules. And basically from that recommendation service, if you download all of the modules of that recommendation service, you get a certain set of modules. And that could be a no batteries included, all batteries included, only recyclable batteries, whatever. Um, so I, I don't see a single uh, set out there of the standard library. I see uh, many, many sets of standard libraries out there. Um, and I actually personally see Rakudo as it is, as we have in the settings at the moment. Uh, that's the standard library that, we, that you're gonna get with any Recruiter Pro 6. Is, is that, I think Jonathan wants to say something. I, I think the nice way to see it, or the way you know, Larry sort of talks about it, and I've tended to, is that actually it's a lot like the Linux world. Um, you know, the thing that we, we build as Perl 6, uh, Recruiter Perl 6, and we ship as the compiler is very much like the kernel in this model. And mm -hmm. then you have lots of distributions um, that cater to different needs. That model has worked pretty well uh, in many ways. And so, you know, I think that's, that's where we tend to be heading. Yeah. Um, so there won't be an official declaration of X is a core module um, beyond what, you know, we have in the languages immediate standard library. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's the, actually, the at the moment, there's only two modules that not get loaded automatically when you start a Perl 6, and that's uh, use test and it's use lib. And those are the only two that not do not get loaded automatically but are included in the distribution. 
and maybe we'll have some small number more. I can't really think of any at the moment, but maybe somebody else will think of some. But that's about it. Any more questions? Okay, so who is using Moose at the moment? Okay, who is Moose using Moose with type checking? You should use Perl 6, it's faster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. It's uh, 15, minutes early. 15 minutes early. Well, it, it means that you have a longer lunch. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I hope you'll see you around. Thank you very much. And Pearl is hiring now, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs>